Welcome to Mr. Biz Radio, biz talk for biz owners. During the next half hour, Mr. Biz, Ken Wentworth, a leading business advisor and two-time best-selling author, will cover topics that will help business owners run their companies more profitably and more efficiently. If you're ready to stop faking the funk and take your business onward and upward, this show is for you. And now, here's Mr. Biz, Ken Wentworth. All right, welcome to another episode of Mr. Biz Radio with me, Mr. Biz, Ken Wentworth. And this week we have uh, a very interesting guest coming to us from like a bazillion, yes, a bazillion time zones away. She's been very gracious with her time. As a matter of fact, we even had to reschedule uh, from a couple of days ago because of some travel issues I was having. And uh, she was very gracious about that. So I'm grateful for that. And uh, she's coming to us super early from Aussie land in Australia. Uh, This week's guest is none other than Rill Bergen Doyle, who is a strategic advisor and entrepreneur that has spent the last 30 years growing businesses across the globe from Australia, USA, and more. She has worked with and grown almost every kind of business imaginable from startups to SMEs to corporate enterprises, one of them being a $1 billion company. (laughs) Furthermore, she founded and led a nonprofit called Step Up Foundation that helped 19,000 adolescents, many of whom were underprivileged or at risk. So, welcome to the show, Rill. Thanks for having me, Ken. It's fantastic to be here. Yeah, and thank you again for uh, for for you know your your flexibility with us. I know it was a little bit uh, oh. of a pain in the neck or whatever, but I appreciate course. that. So the interesting part, as I as I mentioned, that Rill's coming to us from Australia. We're based in Columbus, Ohio, and she actually lived in Columbus, Ohio for a little bit. Is that is that true, Rill? <laughs> I did. I absolutely did. I. Um... I was working as a um, brand strategist at the time. I'd made my, I'd moved to the States. I'd become a published author and a global brand manager for a particular uh, company. And uh, then I made the transition to a amazing business called Via as a brand strategist. And I got seconded to uh, the Columbus office um, from, so San Francisco, New York, and then to Columbus. Uh, and uh, Columbus has a very special um, memories for me. And I'm from Brisbane, Australia. So I'm from Queensland, an area called Queensland, which is kind of like Florida. So it's called the Sunshine State. We are famous for beaches and uh, all of that. And here I was in Columbus, Ohio, and I'd get up in the morning, there'd be snow all over the car. And I'd be like, woohoo, this is so funny. Oh my God, I'm having so much fun scraping the ice off my thing. And all the all the locals are like grumpy and unhappy about it. But I'm like, oh my God, this is the funnest thing ever. <laughs> so because uh, it was so different to what my my previous life had been. So yeah. uh, it was great. And I made some amazing friends in Columbus. And it was really impressed with the city itself. Loved it. Yeah, I think it's, you know, obviously I've I've lived here now for gosh. I'm trying to think how long it's been. I came here originally to go to to go to college and just stayed. Um, and you know, we like to travel a good bit, but you know, we've still been stayed based here. And I think there is, a lot of people just think of you know Columbus as a midwestern town and don't realize some of the the culture that's here, the culinary aspect. There's a of lot it. of art, man. There's so much. There's a, I was shocked by the art scene and the food scene. I had no, I had not associated that at all with with uh, Columbus. I had no expectation of that. And it was fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Well, so t- so that's part of your, obviously your entrepreneurial journey. But tell us, uh, tell, if you would, you know, bring us back. Tell us your okay. entrepreneurial journey from, you know, from beginning to where you're at now, if you would. Okay, sure. So, um, well, the, I'll, don't worry, I'm not going to tell you my entire background, but I will give you a little insight in that my, my mother uh, started her first business when I was three. And uh, what happened was that her and her best friend were in the business together. And so one mum would take care of myself and the other mother's two boys. So the three of us, one mum would take care of the three of us for three or four days while the other mum worked in the business and then they'd swap, uh, et cetera. So I literally grew up in my mother's, she went on to have other businesses after that. So I grew up in small business. Um, I used to get a cab. Can you imagine doing this now? I used to get a cab when I was six years old. I would get a cab from school to my mother's business and wait for her to finish. Wow. Uh, you got to remember, this is the 70s, right? So there wasn't the structure for women to be supported with childcare. So you just, I guess you did what you had to do. Yeah. So, uh, uh, so yeah, I grew up literally, literally at her feet in various different businesses. And by the time I was a teenager, my parents had a business together and 
uh, I worked in the business after school and on weekends and so on. And then on school holidays, they would actually take three or four days off and I would run the business. So, uh, so I just, I grew up in it, it was in my blood in the SME world, the small to medium sized business. And then I went to uni. I was very clear business was my thing. Uh, I went to university, came out of that, uh, um, got hired out of 400 people to um, for my dream job. Uh, it was incredible. I, I get to work with a company here called Results Corp. And Results Corp was the largest um, advisor to the SME market in Australia and New Zealand. Uh, and so at 21, I was taught how to grow any business, any time. Uh, I got to work with every kind of business imaginable right then and there. At my first two years out, I was working on everything from hospitals to hotels to accounting firms to architects to pubs to restaurants, you know, handymen, whatever, florists, think of anything you can. And I was literally teaching them how to grow their businesses quickly uh, and successfully. And uh, it was an amazing experience. It was a very high pressure environment. So I learned quickly to produce results. <laughs> and I ended up doing that very well and got promoted and ended up running a team of consultants. And I oversaw the growth of 120 SMEs uh, for a year at a time, uh, all fully guaranteed programs. So it was an incredible experience. And I got to work in that. I got to work with uh, Paul Dunn and Chris Newton, Jay Abraham and Michael Gerber, and um, also got to meet Robert Kiyosaki and Blair Singer and uh, just a heap of De De Dory Cordova, M amazing groups of amazing mentors that I got to meet and work with. Uh, and then I decided that I was actually interested in the whole health of a business, not just the sales and marketing side. And so I started my first business when I was 23, 23, nearly 24, with 1,100 bucks to my name and no clue, except that I was passionate. <laughs> and it was a strategic planning firm that I had no right to be in, <laughs> but <laughs> I was passionate about the whole health of a business and what does it look like when you really think about what you want and then go after and create that. And, uh, and we grew from zero to... 400 active clients in a very short space of time. We became the largest provider of strategic planning and advisory in, in our state. Uh, and uh, I was young enough to not know what I was doing. So I did what my mentors and books said, and I replaced myself in the business. The business ran without me within two years and took six months off and traveled the States and, uh, and then um, came back and sold it, decided to sell it and uh, went on from there, moved to the States, as I said, became a global brand manager and then met Via and became a brand strategist and started working on uh, billion dollar companies and 400 million dollar companies and, and realized that they're exactly the same as SMEs, small to medium sized enterprises, except they have more zeros, more complacency, more politics. Uh, and, uh, but it was an amazing experience. And I got to live in the US, I got to live in California, uh, New York, Ohio, and Florida. They're like four different countries, <laughs> if yeah. you're unclear. They are completely like four different countries. So it was an amazing experience. I was there for nearly five years, came home to Australia and um, started my nonprofit, had had this idea when I was living in San Francisco for this nonprofit, but I was too chicken to do it. <laughs> I finally got the courage up and did it when I came home. Uh, and that ran for 10 years that you mentioned called Step Up and we grew that to three countries. Uh, and then I, I um, decided to go back to my passion of SMEs and I, um, I launched, raised $1.8 million in two weeks and launched uh, one of the fastest growing franchise companies in Australia. And then there's more from there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's awesome. Well, we're, uh, you know, time flies when you're having fun. We're going to hit a break here, but we'll, we'll continue the stories. We're going to find out more about what Real is doing now. We'll come back after the break. We'll be the Mr. Biz Tip of the Week, and we'll dive back in with Real Bergandoro. Business owners have a continually growing to-do list with little time for revenue-producing activities. With Check Off Your List and their experienced team of virtual assistants, you can focus on growing your business. Visit CheckOffYourList.com to learn how Check Off Your List's skilled team can handle your day-to-day -day tasks like social media, bookkeeping, calendar maintenance, and much more. Contact Check Off Your List at CheckOffYourList.com or call 888-262-1249 to see how their virtual assistants can help you live to work rather than work to live. Thank you for listening to Mr. Biz Radio. Did you know our show airs seven days a week for more than 30 hours now? If you are in the B2B space and would like to reach thousands of business owners every week, including our more than 250,000 social media followers, our thousands of daily internet radio listeners, our email list fans, and Mr. Biz Solutions members, email us at info at MrBizSolutions.com to become a sponsor. Tap into Mr. Biz Nation to help grow your business. 
check out both of Mr. Biz's national best-selling books, Pathway to Profits, and How to Be a Cash Flow Pro on Amazon. Now, once again, here's Mr. Biz. All right, welcome back to the show. And as I mentioned at the, uh, before the break, it's time for Mr. Biz Tip of the Week, as we always do at the beginning of the second segment. And this week's tip is focus on your strengths and hire experts for your weakness. Uh, these are things, again, it sounds very obvious, but I see this in working with business owners all the time. Some of it's a little bit of ego and some of it's a little bit of lack of self-awareness. You have to know what you're not good at and, and be honest with yourself. And whatever those things are, it's, it's all right. We, we, were, we all can't be good at everything. There's things that you're not good at that are critical to your business. Hire experts for those. Don't be afraid to, to hire someone because the, the knock-on impact of that, the cumulative impact of that is massive. I promise you, if your business has, let's say, eight critical skills that are needed, and let's say you're really good in five of them, if you get experts to help you in the other three, your business will absolutely explode. So do not be afraid to do that. Hire experts for your weaknesses. That is the Mr. Biz Tip of the Week. We'll get back into talking with Rill. I want to mention you can follow Rill on uh, LinkedIn or Facebook, or you can go to her website where you can find out all, all the types of information. Uh, RillBergenDoyle.com, and her, her name is spelled R-Y-L-L-B-U-R-G-I-N, Doyle, D-O-Y-L-E.com, all together, RillBergenDoyle.com. <laughs> Um, so let's get back in. I know you, you had a little bit more to share on your entrepreneurial journey, Rill. So, so, so pick up where you left off, if you would. Sure. So I, I had I came back to Australia. I started my nonprofit. At that point, I was working as an account director at a major advertising agency and working on household name brands. Um, and decided that my love was the SME market, and wanted to create something that made a difference in that space. And actually, did what you're doing, which is make a difference and help people discover things that I just don't know about how to grow their businesses, right? That's an amazing tip you just give, and I see it all the time. You are completely correct. Do what Ken said, everybody. So, uh, um, so uh, yeah, so I, I decided to create a business where I had had about one of the companies I worked for um, worked with accountants, right? We coached and consulted with accountants and taught them how to grow their firms. And one of the things I knew about accountants is they're not very good at actually teaching clients how to grow their businesses. They're good at telling them what happened after the fact. Yes. So we created a franchise where an accounting firm would buy a business in a box, a consulting and coaching business in a box kind of thing. Um, and they could add a million dollars in revenue and make a massive difference to their clients. And, and we did that. I raised $1.8 million to, in two weeks to start that business. Uh, we became the 11th uh, fastest growing franchise company in Australia. We had 65 franchisees in two years flat. Uh, was a very successful and then we had a big fat learning experience i had a big fat learning experience and lost a lot after cumulative revenues of about 14 million so that was a that was an amazing experience but we made a difference to thousands and thousands of smes here in australia new zealand uh and um licked my wounds for a bit um and then actually strangely enough met a group of dairy farming families and helped them launch a sustainably farmed milk uh, which is still sold in the major supermarkets here today uh and um, then got headhunted to be the CEO of a $100 million construction company, uh, which I came back and did, came back to Brisbane to do that, um, and ran a team, ran a 200-person team, uh, a group of companies, and had an absolute blast. I'm currently the CEO of a company that I own part of in the construction space as well. Um, and uh, really, in the last few years, we have, uh, we have, uh what's my well, how about i explain this <laughs> so my focus has basically been growth to sum up all of that for the last 30 years i have been growing my own or other people's enterprises and from as you said from startups to smes to billion dollar companies and absolutely love it if you, uh, if there's anything we need to talk about it's how to grow a business that's my uh space and now i have about eight different um, businesses from construction to agriculture to tech uh, where we own a significant share of those and we focus on growing those. And then I work with a handful. And by handful, I mean a literal handful of people around the world who are committed to growth uh, and love it. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's a fascinating journey and I love sort of the ebbs and flows of it, right? You kind of in the corporate world, out of the corporate world. And, and by the way, going all the way back, 
you you were destined to do what you do real right basically yeah. being at the at the foot of your parents as they're growing businesses etc i mean you you grew up with that you grew up with that that entrepreneurial gene that they probably passed down to you as well as seeing yeah. it day in day out as a, as a youngster yeah absolutely i absolutely did and, and i i think there's just an unconscious um there is something about people say it's in your blood there is an unconscious competence that just is from being in that space uh, and of course, my mum started, she had no idea what she was doing, but she just had a lot of courage and pluck and she's smart and she worked hard and I saw all that and uh, she was very good. And, and the business my parents did together, they were great. Uh, they had they, they were very clear on which, which roles they both played and they did a good job of that. And um, yeah, it's, I've been, I feel very blessed, very, very lucky. I also got really incredibly lucky early in my career to meet all of those famous high profile people that I ended up being mentored by. So uh, I've had some luck. I've had some learnings, and it's been an amazing, amazing journey. I, you know, I, in Australia here, I'm listed in the top 50 female entrepreneurs in the country. Um, uh, I've been a Telstra Businesswoman of the Year finalist, which is a big deal here. Uh, so I've been very blessed with with also those kinds of um, recognitions. But the fun for me is is seeing something grow, uh, whether it's mine or someone else's. It's what I'm passionate about. Yeah. Well, and that's why we're going to talk uh, during the third segment. We've got a couple of minutes left here. But in the third segment, we're going to pick Rill's brain about some things that are happening. So we're at the beginning of 2022 now, and we're going to talk about some things that she sees in the marketplace that, that she thinks is going to happen in 2022 that we should be taking advantage of in order to achieve that you know, massive growth in all of our businesses. But with about two minutes left here in this segment, I wanted to ask you, you know, what, what, how important is strategy? How important is strategy uh, for growing your business? I know it's a loaded uh, question. Oh my God, it's the perfect question. <laughs> uh, actually, people don't normally ask me that straight up. The answer is incredibly strategy. I know that incredibly important. I know that um, one of the, I think it's Jack Welsh says, or somebody says culture eats strategy for breakfast, but in, and I totally get that. But for me, if you don't have a strategy, you've got no chance of building a culture anyway. So if you're, if, and by strategy, look, most people are confused by strategy. Most business owners don't actually understand what it means. And uh, fundamentally what it means is where do you want to be by when? And the what you're looking for is the strategy, the, the way forward, the plan that will get you from A, where you are now, to B, where you want to be in the fastest, most efficient, most profitable, easiest, most leveraged way. And most business owners are so busy being busy that they never stop to figure that out. And in fact, most business owners can tell me what they don't want versus what they actually want. Most people are not clear on what they want this business, which is, by the way, a vehicle for your life, for your wealth and for your legacy and to make a difference in your sector. Most people are not clear on what they want that actual vehicle to provide them in terms of profits and therefore what revenues, therefore how many people do we need to serve? How are we going to do that in a profitable way? They don't, even, they don't have that thinking for 10, 10 years out, five years out, even two years out. They're so busy being busy and their business is in their face. Uh, the biggest thing they could do is stop and think about that. And then you work backwards from that. that. That's the other one thing I'll just say before we wrap up. Most people try to move forwards from where they are now. It's incredibly difficult to do that because all you see is your constraints and your current circumstances. You have to go out to the future and work backwards from there. Yeah, no, I, I love it. And that's that's what I do. You, you're right. I, when I have a new client, I start with that. First of all, what, what, how do you want to exit this business? And, and what's that time frame? And then let's work backwards from there. So exactly what you're talking about. So yeah. again, this week, we're talking with Real Bergen Doyle. You can find out more at realbergendoyle.com. Um, follow her on LinkedIn and Facebook. We're going to come back and get her tips and some things she sees for 2022 that will help all of us grow our business. Are you ready to automate your business? Automation is the key to scaling a business and building wealth. It's also one of the most difficult things for a small business owner to do on their own. If you're looking for help with automation, Pulse Technology CRM can help. We have an exclusive offer for Mr. Biz Nation. We will build everything for free, even if it's a sophisticated funnel. Visit thepulsespot.com forward slash Mr. Biz for this exclusive offer. If you find listening to Mr. Biz Radio is helpful, imagine having live access to not only Mr. Biz, but also five other trusted business experts. It's true. You can have live access to your very own CFO, plus a business attorney, 
a website and digital marketing expert, a sales and growth guru, a financing professional, and a customer experience master. Visit MrBizSolutions.com to learn more. Join Mr. Biz Nation at MrBizSolutions.com. To submit questions to the show, email them to info at MrBizSolutions.com. Now, once again, here's Mr. Biz. All right, welcome back to the show. And we are, sorry about that. Uh, I clicked the wrong button. Uh, welcome back to Mr. Biz Radio. We've got uh, we've got uh, our mascot Bowie Biz Barkey in the house, and and uh, he he's not liking something here, so you might hear some barking in the background. I apologize for that. He's not usually in the uh, in in the studio with us, but he is today. All right, that's enough. Tough guy. Um, all right, so look, Ro, you've had this amazing career. You've done all these things. You've helped so many businesses. So help us talk to us about some trends that you see that are going to happen in 2022 and how we can best take advantage of those to grow our businesses? Um, so in terms of trends, I think there is, um, we've all seen some incredible things happen during this crazy time that we didn't think would happen, right? So um, one of the companies I'm CEO of and own part of is a construction company and we build in the retail space, but specifically the luxury retail space. Luxury retail has gone through the roof. <laughs> who would have thought it right um etc in terms of 2022 um uh, really what i prefer to talk about is is actually the market's going to do what the market's going to do right and in covid we saw i saw exact same businesses exact same challenges in terms of the pandemic and the impact of that and one made it and one didn't why was that in the, in literally the same neighborhood right why was that? Well, mostly it's the mindset of the owner and the actions they took, the strategy they focused on, their perspective, all of those things. So for me, I've always said you want to watch what's going on, you want to keep an eye on what your competitors are doing, and then you just get on with it. <laughs> You're not, you just need to know what's up. You don't need to actually be driven by that. So for me, it's more about um, it, my experience has been if you focus on adding value, if, if a business owner focuses on adding as much value as they possibly can in 2022, they will grow their business. The, every business that I, I step into to take to, to be a, become an owner or I start working with a, with a client to help them grow, the first thing I look for is how can they add more value? Where, how, and to whom can they add more value? Can they change the way they do business? Can they make it easier for their customers to buy? And you've seen people transition to that in COVID, right? So... So it's really it's about where and how can I add more value. And then what I've found is this is I've been doing this specifically in this very uncertain times that we've gone through. Uh, I found that there are three keys to thriving. One is perspective. And by that, I don't mean keep a positive mindset, although that's really important. What I mean is business is a long game. Business is a marathon, not a sprint, right? So you have to keep your eye on the prize. Where do you want to be in 10 years? Not in five, not in two, not in one, in 10. Think about how old, I've got an 11-year-old son. Where do I want to be when he's turning 21? What do I want my businesses to be doing by then? That's the way to think about it because you always underestimate what you can do in the short term, uh, in the longer term. So where do you want to be in 10 years? Keep your eye on that prize. And by that, I mean profit. And what's the profit you want out of the business based on that? What, what's the revenue you need to be, et cetera, et cetera, right? And I've got about five things I work on at that end. But where do you want to be? And keep your eye on that prize. Have a long-term perspective. Uh, that's the first thing. The second thing is what is your strategy? If that's where you want to be, what is the fastest, easiest plan to get you there? As I said, most people don't stop and think about that. They're not even clear about what strategy is and they, they're just busy being busy. So what's the actual strategy? And, and where is the leverage? Where are the leverage points in your business? Because most businesses have massive untapped opportunities in their own businesses. Most people still to this day can, it blows my mind. I learned this stuff when I was 21. <laughs> I'm now a lot older than that. Uh, but people still don't track their conversion rates. I'm like, what? How do you not track your conversion rates? That's right, just right. How can you plan if you don't know what your conversion rates are? Right, because exactly. your conversion rate tells you how many leads you have to generate, which tells you what you have to spend on marketing 
And if you know if what your conversion rate is, you could literally say, I need X number of leads. That's it. That's all I have to do is do that because of that. And then I'm going to get that result. Yep. And people just don't do that math. So where, that's a leverage point in the business. The other leverage points are how much people spend with you, how often they come back. Well, these are all basic stuff, but I'm still shocked to this day. And it's not wrong. It just is how it is because people are so busy being busy that they miss these things right in front of them. And you can't see the forest for the trees when you're in your own forest. You have to have someone like you uh, or like me go, hey, but what about X? And what about Y? And hey, what about this? I worked with a company recently, a, very, a successful company in the agricultural space. They produce these big headers, these big fronts, right? 60 foot fronts for tractors to, to, to harvest. Uh, they, they, their customers have to replace them, right? Every few, every five, seven years. Mm -hmm. In the history of the business, have they ever gone back to a single customer? No. Not one. And they're massively successful. Oh, my like gosh. Wildly successful. And they've never gone back to an existing customer and said, hey, you want to replace that? They just have people come to them. And so they go, oh, that's good. We can, that's fine. We'll just do that. But they're missing this whole untapped market that would literally make them one of the biggest players in the market here in Australia. And they are, by the way, the only people on the planet that make a 60-foot header. And they could literally take over the US. So Anyway, there's just untapped leverage points in every business that the business owners, as amazing as they are at what they do, often miss those things because they're not marketers. They're not salespeople. They're not HR people. They're not this. They're not that. They're great at what they do. So you have to ha get support to look at where are those other leverage points and find them. There is always an easier way and missed opportunity sitting right in front of every business I have ever dealt with and as you said i have dealt with thousands in the us in the uk in asia and australia new zealand all over the world so that's the, that that point this, the third point is actions you've got to take action <clears throat> people say well what action well the actions that support the strategy that fulfill on your long-term perspective not oh my god the sky is falling chicken let all this stuff is going down the market's crashing this is happening this is COVID. Da, 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 da. no what actions secure your business, your family, and make a difference to your customers that mean they stick and drive profits? What are the actions that do that? And what are the actions that forward your game to your long-term perspective? And look, I have, I have one of my businesses has been shut down. By the time we reopen, it will have been two full years from going from a seven-figure thriving business to nothing in a minute. That's what happened. And that's happened to so many people, right? So, uh, but what I noticed is that we have to make, to really thrive in what is going to continue to be uncertain times. We're not at a new normal yet. Uh, um, what is really important is that you make the short-term acute decisions we have to make based on what's going on, but you make those decisions inside the context of your long-term perspective and you're tweaking your strategy as you go, but you have a strategy, you're clear on what you're doing, why you're doing it, how many of this you need, what, how the fastest way to get market, all that stuff. You're tweaking that, you're correcting, checking and correcting as you go, and you're taking the actions that short-term required acute things to deal with the acute circumstances we find ourselves in, but you're doing them in the context of that longer-term play. The people who do these short-term decisions, which we've all been forced to do, without that longer term perspective and without any strategy, burn cash and end up suffering, make mistakes they don't need to make and put themselves further behind in ever being able to achieve that goal. So make sure you're thinking clearly about that long-term picture and make the short-term decisions you have to make inside that context. So those would be my three keys for thriving in the continued uh, uncertainty that we face. I, I love it, I love it. And, and you and I obviously think very, very similarly, like. Uh, and I, I know we're running out of time, but I wanted to mention, I love what you said about perspective. And I can even say it semantically. So the one business owner that says, oh my gosh, what are we going to do? And then yes. another business owner says, oh my gosh, what are we going to do? Chaos creates opportunity. And that perspective is huge. Uh, time exactly. time is, uh, we're running out of time here, but I wanted to thank you again, Real, for coming on. Follow her on LinkedIn and Facebook, realbergandoyle.com. Thanks so much for coming on, Real. I really appreciate it. Thanks so much for having me. It's been fabulous. And I've been so nice to be reconnected with Columbus. So thank you, Ken. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for watching, everyone. As always, don't forget, cash flow is king. <laughs> and queen. <laughs> <laughs>
This has been Mr. Biz Radio. To learn how to become part of Mr. Biz Nation, visit MrBizSolutions.com. For access to free weekly content, subscribe to the Mr. Biz YouTube channel and follow him on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and Twitter. To listen to archive shows, you can find them on the Mr. Biz Solutions website.